Hello world, Stephen Michael Zach here, and today we are talking about a Kickstarter that I backed. This is the Slight Panel and Expansion Pack. Now, uh, this is what it cost me for the Kickstarter, and this is also what it will cost you if you buy it now. Now, I did buy this with my own money, so these are going to be my own brutal and honest opinions as always. So, let's take a look at what comes inside the box. My own brutal and honest opinions as always. This is new to me. Okay, so let's start off with the main S light here. Now, uh, it is made, the box is made of recycled material, uh, which is very cool and very environmental. You do get a code for the app on the inside. And inside, you will find the slight right here, uh, which is very, very cool. You will get uh, some options here. Now, uh, this is quite a bit, even though this is recycled material, it's quite a bit of e waste. Uh, but there you go, there you have it. I guess they were going for present presentation. Uh, but popping this open, you are going to get a very long uh, USB-C, and it does come with Velcro. Uh, you'll get a USB-C and an angled USB-C, and uh, the cable is super long, so that is fantastic. Then you are going to get the magnetic mount. Now, the magnetic mount does have a quarter 20 here, uh, which is fantastic, so you can mount it to other things. And then in this ginormous box, you are going to get the smallest, tiniest, uh, USB type C foldable power plug. Uh, so there you go. And that is all that is in that box. Assembly is very easy. You take the plate here, which has an incredibly strong magnet. Let's talk about the build quality here. It is made of all plastic. Now I did notice that there was some uh, bowing in the center here. Uh, I bought two of these. One of these uh, actually uh, was straight and flat. Uh, we'll get, well, I'll, I'll explain that uh, at the end of the video, uh, but there is some warping that is occurring, uh, but it is made of plastic. Now, I will say that the plastic is very scratchable. Uh, there are quite a few scratches, even after a couple of days of using this. Uh, so it is all plastic. There is some vents here. You get a quarter 20 on the bottom, on the uh, bottom side here and on this side as well. And that is pretty much it. You do get a very nice screen, which you will see in a moment. And you do get these very nice clicky buttons, uh, be it a little hard to see in the dark, uh, but you do get uh, some nice controls here as well. And for assembly, just attach the back plate and this sucker ain't going nowhere. Let's talk about the expansion kit here. Now I did buy this and uh, it will come with the clamp here, uh, which is a, a clamp that actually has a ball head here so you can adjust it where you want it. Now you can attach it to either one of the quarter 20s on the side or bottom here, or you can go ahead and screw this in right here. And there you go, it is uh, pretty much ready to go. Also inside the expansion kit, you are going to get a magnetic diffusion plate. Uh, which works again very, very well. Once it is on, uh, this sucker is not coming off. And you are going to get a case. Uh, the case is neoprene, and it does have these very strong zippers and some very nice padding inside. Uh, very nice velour, so really, really nice case. Okay, so you can power this with a V-mount if your V-mount has a PD power delivery system. This is the Small Rig 99, uh, and it does work. You cannot use the A port, you have to use the C to C, but you can plug that in, and there you go. Just keep in mind, when this is plugged in, even if the panel is off, it is still drawing power. Uh, so make sure you unplug it uh, when you go to lunch, otherwise your batteries will be dead. So let's take a look at the screen now. We're gonna pop this off and we will, uh, once we plug this in, let's go ahead and plug this in. And right away, it will say slight, wait for that to go off. And you'll hit your power button down here. And right away, you get a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful screen here. Um, it is wonderful. I really love this screen. Now this goes from 10,000 Kelvin all the way down to 2,500 Kelvin, which is very nice. If you hold in the function button, you do get a plus green magenta from zero to 12 and from zero to minus 12. So there you go. And the buttons are nice. Uh, hold down the function button again, and it goes back to there. And you can control the brightness. It goes from 100 all the way down, and it is fairly snappy all the way down to zero, which is very nice. We'll just go up to like 50%. And let's go ahead and tap the function button. And here is your HSI, uh, which is very, very, very nice. It works well. Um, that's your HSI. And of course you can 
jack this up. You can jack up the brightness. And you can also, it's got some, just some very nice color here. Uh, really, really fast, really quick. I like a good 240. Uh, that is my favorite color. And if you hold down the function button, then you will be able to use the bottom value button to control the saturation. So yes, you can control the saturation as well. And then again, this hitting the function button, you do get special effects like broken globe. Uh, and you can control the speed on all the special effects and the brightness. Holding down the function button, you'll get paparazzi. Holding it again, you'll get TV. You'll get lightning. You'll get police. Fireworks. Disco. Pulsing. Strobe. Fire. Now, I will say the fire works quite beautifully, especially if you speed it up a bit. Uh, they really did a nice job with the special effects here. And pressing it again, you'll go back to your main color temperature. And that is it. That is the controls. So here we are. I'm at 5600 Kelvin. I do have 3900 Kelvin on the camera, but I did want to show you this. Uh, this is the beam without about a meter away without, uh, without uh, the diffusion. And as you can see, it's very orange on the side here. And then when you go sort of this way, uh, it becomes very blue, as you can see. So that is something to be aware of, um, is that this panel is not even at all. Uh, especially here, you could definitely see, like for some reason it's going orange. The center is fine, and then you're getting a little bit of blue here. And I'll go down to 30, uh, 3900 Kelvin, which the camera is set at to, to show you that as well. There's 3900 Kelvin, and again, See, we're still getting that orange, like this weird orange ring on the end and then a weird blue ring on the end. So that is a problem with the LEDs. Let's go ahead and add the diffusion to see if we have the same problem. And again, uh, you're getting orange there and you're getting blue, blue on the end. So uh, just be aware that is a thing. Now let's take a look at the color readings. See at each end, the colors are pretty useless. Uh, they are just the they are just way too green. They are just way off. Uh, really, between 36, 3200 Kelvin and fifty six hundred Kelvin is where this thing shines, and I do think that it shines even better in the tungsten thirty two hundred range. Uh, is a little bit better than the uh, daylight range. Okay, so we've downloaded the app with the QR code and we have the phone app here. Now it says no light, so we're gonna go up and hit plus and we're gonna hit add a light and right away it finds it. Uh, the first time I did this, it was a little difficult to uh, get working, but I got it working, uh, probably operator error and just hit done. And there we go, very, very, very simple. And you can turn it on and turn it off right here. Press the arrow button here and you do get 100%, uh, you have controls. Uh, we could change the color temperature. We'll go back to 3900 Kelvin because that's what I record at. Uh, next, let's go ahead and hit the settings button here. And again, you have zero, 25, 50, 75, 100. Uh, and then you have tungsten, which is 3900, um, which is 3200, daylight, which is 56, and cool white, which is 7500 Kelvin. Uh, so there you go. We'll go back to tungsten and we'll take this back up to 39. And that is pretty much it for controls. At the bottom here, you have colors. So this will control your HSI, which is very, very, very cool. And you can press this button and you can pick a color here and hit use a color. And then it will go whatever color that is, which is very cool. Uh, we'll go back to the blue here. Now I really wish that this showed you what the value was um, 
it does not show you. And that's something that's missing from a lot of apps. It doesn't tell you that this is 240. Uh, it doesn't tell you what the temperature is here. However, uh, you can do a hypertext code as well. Uh, we'll just use that. If you know the, the text code, you can use that. Um, I really wish, and that's something that is kind of missing from this. I really wish that this did have, tell you what number HSI you were on. Uh, so there you go. And then you go into effects and you have all your effects like police and let's check out fire. Now, one thing that is missing from the phone app is you do not have any control over the speed um, or the brightness here. Uh, you can go back into whites uh, and let's go ahead and dim this down and then let's go back into effects and choose fire again. And it just goes back to what it was. So again, you do not have uh, a lot of controls here. Uh, when it comes to the phone app, uh, when it comes to these special effects. So you will have to adjust everything from the back of the unit. Uh, hopefully that is something they could fix uh, in a firmware update, but that is missing here. And then just the color, uh, just the uh, knowing which HSI that you are on uh, would be very, very helpful. Uh, but all in all, not bad. The uh, HSI does look quite nice. Okay, so let's talk about the panels, the pros and cons. Let's start off with our readings. These things are very green. Yes, you can correct them with the uh, plus minus magenta. Uh, it does work. Um, however, you are losing your C you're losing your CRI values uh, from R9 through R12. They're just going down, and you're losing quality of light. Um, so, take that with what you will. Um, these things are green. That's all I'm going to say about it. Now let's flip over to the back and let's talk about the other, uh, the other modes. The HSI works beautifully. I have no qualms about that. It looks great. Um, these special effects work very well. You do get speed control and, uh, brightness. I really wish we had color control, maybe in a firmware update. That way I could do like fantasy fire, uh, like blue or purple. But again, I could just stick a gel in front of it. No big deal. Um, the, the screen is wonderful. It works great. Uh, one thing I will say for the controls is it is very difficult to find these controls in the dark. I am always stumbling because they made them black and there's nothing here illuminating them. Uh, I will most likely get some uh, glow-in-the-dark marker and scribble over these, uh, some permanent glow-in-the-dark marker, um, because they are very, very hard to find in the dark. Uh, they do work very well, but very hard to find. With that, let's go into the build quality. Now, these are plastic, uh, very, very plasticky. Uh, do not drop them. Uh, while they are seem pretty solid uh, and they seem pretty heavy, uh, I can see this part breaking very easily. Um, let's talk about the problems that I'm having and that is the heat dissipation. There are just these little vents here and that is it. This thing gets hot to the touch, uh, especially the metal plate. I went to grab it from the metal plate after running it over an hour and I had to take my hand away. It wasn't gonna burn me, but it was hot enough for me to remove my hand. And with that said, these, because of the heat, these are starting to warp in front. The grids, I don't know if you could see this, I'll push on it, but the grids uh, are starting to kind of bubble in the front and they're starting to push the, uh, the plastic uh, protection in the front. Uh, they're starting to push that up. Now, one of these came perfectly fine, perfectly flat. One of them was a little bit like that. But now after running them together, even this one, I'll show you, even this one is starting to bubble. Uh, this one more so, because uh, this one already had some bubbles. So there are some build quality issues with these. Also, because the, the uh, grid is starting to push up, it is actually blocking some of the LEDs in the center. So I may have not gotten the best readings because uh, it's already starting to warp and block the LEDs. Uh, but I tried to get as good readings as I could. Um, but that is definitely an issue. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there definitely is some warping with the plastic here going on uh, and that and in the center. Uh, and that's because it gets too hot. So that's it. That is the, that is that. Now let's talk a little bit more about 
uh, what it comes with, the problems I have. Um, also, when you have this mounted and you're in tungsten mode or you're in daylight mode, when you turn this left and right, on one side you're getting an orange band at the end of the beam, and on the other side you're getting a blue band. Uh, so the, the, you're getting some odd coloring on the ends of the beams when you move it back and forth. Uh, so that is something to be aware of as well. Now let's talk about this mount. Um, I was having a little problem with this mount uh, where, uh, and it looks like I'm having it again, uh, this little uh, bolt right here. Uh, on the other one, it looks like it's glued on, but it keeps coming loose and keeps rolling down. And when that happens, uh, I can't open or close this. Uh, so you just have to be careful that uh, this bolt is going to uh, stay where it needs to stay. Um, to make sure that it stays up here. I'll probably put a little bit of super glue on the end so it stays attached. The other thing with this mount is the fact that it is not fit on the bottom two rungs of a C-stand. It just doesn't open wide enough. And also when the when this is on, uh, it holds but not well. Sometimes I found, one of them I found was, uh, was actually starting to sag. Uh, so that is something to know is that these are not the best uh, clamps in the world. You may want to mount it by a quarter 20 and just get a ball head like I did for the test. So clamp is just kind of okay. Talking about the diffusion, once you put the diffusion on, uh, it changes the color again. Again, you're going to have a hard time uh, getting it color accurate and it's just going to throw the CRI off. So that is something to note. Also note that yes, you can put this together and you can throw it into the case. The case is quite nice. It's got this nice velour. It's got a strong zipper. You can throw this in. I have the back plate on. Uh, just know that because this is neoprene, anything you put on top of this, it is going to, uh, if you leave something heavy on this for a few minutes, uh, it is going to mark up. Uh, it's going to put indents into your uh, case. Now, yes, they will pop back up depending on how quickly you get the object off. Uh, mine seems to have sprung back, uh, but just know that that can be an issue. Also, I wouldn't store it with the back plate because as you could see, uh, this is gonna wear out your case. Uh, you're gonna have like a little kind of like, like ring here. You have a little bit popped out. So I would definitely take out the back plate and just store this flat. Now, yes, you can store the cool cord and they did give you a nice long cord with velcro you can slide that in there and you can slide the power brick in as well now my suggestion is wrap this in put this in a little like camera bag little bag uh or something like a a cleaning cloth because this can and has started to actually scratch the material again this material is very scratchable um this are i've had this maybe a week and it's already got uh quite a few scratches on it but you can store that stuff in there and then just kind of carry this around. Uh, I would really like to see in the next iteration, uh, maybe put a Velcro pocket on the back where you can put all the accoutrement or maybe a hard case or something different. And last, going back to the diffusion, um, this diffusion does change the color uh, quite a bit. I would like to see maybe as an add-on, maybe a soft box that you could attach this. Uh, that would be very, very cool, especially if they put a quarter 20 in the top, in the top, bottom, and both sides. That would be really cool because then you could attach a soft box that way. That'd be incredibly cool. A soft box with a grid would be probably better than this thing. Uh, so there you go. There you have it. Let's talk about the app. Now the app was actually pretty good. Syncing these was a little slow at first, but once I got it down pat, it was okay. The app ha is very functional. It was missing a few controls, uh, as you saw, but uh, all in all, the app was pretty good. I think they could just fix that with a firmware update. Now let's talk power. Uh, this does work with a V-mount battery. If the V-mount battery does have PD power delivery system, that's this orange here. Now it does not work with a type A. You will have to go C to C. Um, and one thing that I did notice is we were testing these out. We had it plugged in. We went to lunch. We came back and my V-mount battery was dead. Um, this thing, even though this, the, 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 the S light is, the slide is off. Um, even though the slide is off, it is still drawing power. It is still going to burn down your battery. So I would love it if they could do a firmware update or in the next model, um, make it so that it's not drawing power when it's off. Because uh, you will be surprised, your battery will be dead. So make sure when you go to lunch, you unplug your battery. And lastly, this is getting very nitpicky. I know these are recycled materials, but 
do we really need all these boxes? Uh, especially this one for the power brick, uh, which I thought was incredibly ridiculous. You have this giant box uh, for this little tiny power brick. Uh, I know it's recycled material, but it still feels like a lot of e-waste. Uh, so I'll tell you, the plate and the wire and everything could have come in one box and I wouldn't have cared. Uh, yes, it is nice presentational, uh, but there is a lot of e-waste with recycled material here. Okay, so at the end of the day, where do I stand on this? Look, I know that this company had a slew of problems. And yes, they are a mom and pop shop. They are a bunch of kids trying to make their way in the world of lighting. And I really admire that. Uh, and I love, love, love the idea of these. Something small, something the size and weight of a Chromebook that you could stick into your bag and take with you. Uh, that's super thin, super portable. Uh, I really do love that. Um, now, with that being said, and yes, by the way, I just want to mention that, yes, I know they had a pandemic, they had supply chain issues, they had to switch manufacturers, they had manufacturing issues. So that makes sense when you take a look at the cons of this thing. Um, it just seems like they were just trying to get something out um, and they did it. And kudos to them for doing that. Um, with that said, let's talk about some of the things I would like to see improve. Now, build quality is a huge issue. The fact that this is already bowing and uh, melting uh, because there isn't enough ventilation and it gets hot, um, that definitely is an issue. Um, I don't know how long that's going to last or how much this is going to bow, um, but there you go. There you have it. That is something that absolutely needs to be fixed. I would love to maybe see these made out of a different material, very much like, uh, like GVM used to make their old panels out of aircraft aluminum. They would be lighter and they would basically act like a heat sink because uh, those things never got hot. Um, so maybe make it out of some kind of aluminum or carbon fiber, something that uh, is a little bit more cooling or add some ventilation. Or dare I say, even though I don't want to say it at a fan, um, probably not because fans are loud, um, but they may have to if they want to keep this form factor. The second thing to work on is the LED array. It is still very green. Um, it is, it's okay. It's hitting some of the readings, but again, the LEDs are just very green, I find. Uh, and when I readjust them, I do lose a lot of CRI values. Um, I do lose quite a bit, um, not crazy, a crazy amount, but enough to make a difference for me personally. Um, I will say that, uh, with these LEDs, I will say that the HSI is fantastic. I will say that the special effects are fantastic. Um, but they just really need better LEDs because keep in mind, LEDs green up over time. And if these are already a 1.6 magenta off, um, then... I don't know about the longevity of this panel uh, because it already is so green. Um, so that is something to work on. So build quality, heat control, and getting better LED, uh, uh, bicolor LEDs in this thing are something that I really, really want to see in the next model. Also, I'd love it if they would give us a hard case or some kind of back pocket for the case so I could put all the extra stuff in. Uh, that would help a whole bunch. And again, as you can see, even the magnet is uh, starting to scratch quite a bit uh, from you. So this material just really, really scratchy. So at the end of the day, what do I think about these? I love this idea. Uh, from uh, This is a startup. This is a Kickstarter. You, it's kind of like you get what you get. Um, I really love this idea and I hope they don't get discouraged and I do hope that these actually sell uh, and they are able to make a version two, especially if they take a lot of uh, my suggestions or a lot of suggestions from, suggestions from a lot of other creators. Uh, I think they are really onto something. That is the reason why I back this. Um, but there is, this is definitely a version one. Um, I'm very curious to see uh, their version two and what they do to it and how they change it. So those are my thoughts, but I want to know yours. So leave your questions and comments in the notes below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to mash the bell button to be notified when we drop a brand new video. And feel free to use the links below as it helps out the channel. I'm Stephen Michael Zach, and this is new to me.